Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. And if you haven't put August 21st, 2017 on your calendar yet, you need to do that right now because that's the day a total solar eclipse is gonna go right across the middle of the United States from Oregon to South Carolina. So I'm gonna to put together this video on what to do you can do to help you enjoy that event. What you need to do, what you have to do, and what you should not do. So let's get started. First off, it's coming up here in a couple months, so you need to put in for your vacation. People have known about this for years, and some people have had their vacation set for several years. So if you haven't put in for your vacation, do so now, but don't be upset if you don't get it because somebody's got to mind the store. It happens on a Monday. 21st of August is on a Monday, so if you can get the time off, make a weekend of it. Add an, attend an event. There's lots of events that uh, are available to the public that you can attend or you can start your own event, but don't be surprised if there, a lot of the events are already taken up because we're only a couple months away. However, if you wanna do something yourself, don't do something funky. Don't think you're gonna have a wedding ceremony during the eclipse. Don't dilute the two. A wedding is a great personal event. An eclipse is a great natural event. Don't try to combine the two and you end up dividing your attention between the two. Not a good idea. You'll need special filters for your eyes. You can't just use ordinary sunglasses to view a solar eclipse. That's a great way to lose your eyes, folks. You only have one pair of eyes. Don't mess them up trying to enjoy this. Get a good set of filters. Um, I'm not talking about camera filters. I'm talking about sunglasses, something you can look up at the sun with your, neck, with your eye. Um, and be selective on where you buy them. Don't go to eBay, say, I can get a pair of solar uh, eclipse glasses for 10 cents from Shenzhen, China, and then ruin your eyes because they're garbage. Be, be very selective about where you buy these things. If nothing else, you can get a pinhole, and I'll show you how to make one of those. Here's a picture right here of how to make one of those. Educate yourself now. There's lots of websites, I'll put, in them, put them in the description down below the video, so you can educate yourself and be the expert come Eclipse Day. Best advice I can get you, give you is the book called Totality by Fred Espinek. He does a great job of explaining what eclipses are, how the mechanics work, the history of them, the future of them, what we learn from them, and he does it in a very non-technical sense. And finally, if you can find a place up high above the landscape where you can look to the northwest, that's the best place to view an eclipse, and I'll explain to you why later on. So let's get on to uh, out of planning and go on to the, you know, the weekend of the eclipse, shall we? The day before the eclipse, Sunday the 20th, the first thing you want to do is check the weather. You won't be able to watch the eclipse if it's going to be cloudy out. So you also need to be mobile. You may have a great spot picked out, but you've got to have several spots picked out. And you, they need to be to where you can get to them on Sunday bef beforehand. But don't be surprised if they're rather busy too. Um, but check the weather. If you have internet access, great. If not, listen to the uh, local radio stations or watch a uh, television station check the weather. You also need to be mobile. Stay flexible. You may have a great spot, but you can't watch it if it's cloudy. So you want to be able to pick up and move. So don't take the big RV that's the size of Texas. Get entrenched with being hooked up to electricity and water and sewer and have everything disgorged onto your campsite and then realize, oh, it's going to be cloudy tomorrow morning. We need to pack up. Stay light. Stay flexible. Don't party it up Sunday night. Nothing is going to be worse than watching the eclipse with a hangover with everybody else yelling and screaming and hooping it up. And you're sitting there thinking, oh man, just shut up. That's not a way to watch the eclipse. In fact, go to bed early, get a good night's sleep because tomorrow morning is going to be a big day. Okay, so now it's Monday morning, August 21st, the big day. First thing we want to do is again, check the weather. See if it might be more advantageous to relocate. Make sure you have a chair, or better yet, a recliner. Regular camp chair, you're looking forward. You're going to be looking up. And that's going to strain your neck, and it's going to get tiresome, and, and your neck is going to get sore, and your shoulder is going to hurt. So get a recliner, or better yet, a beach blanket and a pillow. Lay on the ground. Now, you're going to be watching a solar eclipse, which means you're going to be out in the sun. So don't forget the sunscreen. Make sure you lather up with that, and have plenty of snacks and drinks. Last thing you want to do is start getting hungry, getting thirsty, and that kind of uh, takes the edge off of watching the eclipse. So make sure you have something to eat and drink. Now it's time for the big show to start. Okay, so it is now E-Day and E-Hour is fast approaching. Now what time the eclipse starts, peaks, and ends depends on where along the path you are. 
It starts about nine o'clock in the morning on the Oregon coast, but about one in the afternoon in South Carolina. So what time you need to do these things depends on where along the path that you are. But one more thing you want to make sure of is you take a bio break before the eclipse starts. The last thing you want to do is be doing the little dance during the big event. As the moon continues to occlude the sun, and it's a process that takes about 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on where you are in the path, you want to be aware of your surroundings. When it first starts, it's going to be like an ordinary day. But as you get closer and closer to the moment of totality, it will suddenly get darker and darker and darker. So be aware of your surroundings. Watch animals and birds in particular. Some birds will start to roost. Animals will try to settle down for the night. Very unnatural. And also watch your own shadow disappear. That's a very interesting effect. Now, I said to be up on the, on the up high so you can look off to the northwest. And here's the reason why. The moon's shadow is going to be coming from the northwest. So if you can get up high, you have a better opportunity to look out on the landscape and see the moon's shadow advancing across the landscape. So it's now the big event. It's coming up, and you're about to see a total eclipse of the sun. But there's a few things you need to be sure of. All right, it's time for totality. The moon is almost covering up the sun, but you still have to be wearing those special filters because the last thing you want to do is go blind trying to watch a total solar eclipse incorrectly and lose your eyesight. I can't emphasize that enough. Never watch, never look at the sun, period, until it's completely occluded by the moon. And then you only have a few minutes, so very important that you be aware of that time. In fact, I would suggest that you figure out how much time you're going to have for totality, get a timer, punch that into your phone, and as soon as totality hits, hit your timer on your phone, and set it for like 15 seconds before the end of totality so you have time to avert your eyes. Because you can be looking at a total solar eclipse where the sun is completely occluded and then suddenly the moon will move out. Not suddenly, but the moon will eventually move out from in front of the sun and bam, you've got sunlight and that can cause permanent eye damage. So be very, very aware of the limited time that you have to watch the eclipse. There are several ways you can watch the eclipse. You can do it alone or as part of a group. Whichever way you want to do, that's up to you. A lot of people ask, what's the best way to photograph eclipse? The best way to take photographs of eclipse is take your camera, put the lens cap on, turn it off, and put it away. Most people are not able to take a photograph, a good photograph of an eclipse. The vast majority of people just don't have the experience. I'm not trying to degrade you or berate you for that, but there are people who spend their lifetime chasing eclipses all over the world and they have a hard time getting good photographs. So to me, my photograph is, is if I took a picture of a, a total solar eclipse, it would look just like everybody else's. It's gonna look like crap. So I'd rather have the picture up here than fiddle around with a camera all day or all morning. Got two minutes to take those pictures. If you're fiddling with a camera all the time trying to get the cover of the National Geographic, you're gonna miss the eclipse. So put the camera away, let the professionals handle photographs. Um, it, like I say, it is okay to look at the total solar eclipse during totality without a filter. But be understand that eventually the moon will move away from in front of the sun. The sunlight will return. And you need to be aware of that. And you don't want to be looking at the event when that sunlight sun comes streaming through because you can permanently damage your eyes. I can't emphasize that enough. And understand that the... Damage may not be immediate. It may show up hours or even days later, and it can be permanent, and there is usually nothing that can be done. There is no medical procedure. There's no pills or shots that you can take. You're going to be affected with your eyesight the rest of your life. So it's very, very important that you take care of your eyes. And I'll put links down in the description below to how to take care of your eyes and, and be aware of uh, how to properly watch an eclipse in the description below. So the eclipse is almost over. Let's move on to the next phase. And so there you have it. You've actually experienced a total solar eclipse of the sun, something that most people will only see once in their lifetime. So it's a great bucket list item. But is the event over? Far from it. You have a few more things to do. One is to record your memories. Either write them down in a journal, a diary, or even just some scrap paper. Just writing them down will help reinforce those memories into your brain or record it on a voice recorder or get an app for your phone to record a voice. 
just make sure, you know, write, you know, record it, put it down. Schedule an after eclipse party. Now's the time to kick it up and imbibe. If the weather didn't cooperate, don't feel bad. There's nothing you can do about it. And if you did attempt to take photo or video of it and it didn't come out, don't feel bad either. Just remember, it's a once in a lifetime event and is not gonna be repeated until I think 2024. So if you miss this one, you might stick around and catch the one in 2024. This is Backpack Hack coming at you with this trail tip. Hope you found this informative. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment, and I'll see you out there on the trail. Be safe out there.